What's going on, YouTube? Welcome to part two of the standard eBay negotiated uh, flat rate shipping. This is part two of the video series, so definitely watch part one to show how to, I show basically how to um, properly list your item so that you can sell a coin on eBay that's under 20 bucks, that's not graded for a dollar for 84 cents or 60 cents with tracking. So this is the actual physical part of shipping. So I'm going to go over some of the recommendations, the do's and do nots in order to make sure you're staying within the guidelines that eBay has negotiated with the post office. So again, the benefit of this video is to show you guys the proper way to do it. But I've seen a lot of mistakes that people that listed properly, but then they're sending me in a totally incorrect type of envelope. So number one, I'm going to show different types of envelopes. This, I've received coins in this type of envelope where someone's put an actual stamp on it without tracking. Don't ship your coins like that. Don't just put a stamp. You have no way of proving to eBay that you've actually shipped the coin to the buyer. The buyer can say you never got it. If they're dishonest, you will end up sending them a refund. You'll be out the coin. You'll be out the postage. You'll be out the gas you, it took you to get to the post office. You'll be out the postage. You'll just get a big negative. Do not ship coins by just put it, placing a stamp and putting it in an envelope, especially a flimsy envelope like this. This doesn't protect anything. It's cool to send checks this way or bills if you still mail stuff, but do not ship coins with a standard envelope, okay? That's stupid, don't do it, okay? Um, another thing, again, this has to do with the negotiated flat rate standard eBay shipping with the post office. Again, part one of my video series. You cannot ship coins in bubble mailers. Not for 60 cents, not for 84 cents, not for a dollar four. That's not what the program was intended to be used for. You can ship graded coins, you can ship first class shipping coins in this type of envelope, but not with the 60 cents, 84 cents for two ounces, and a dollar four for three ounces. This is not the proper envelope. The post office can basically reject it or basically put that little pink notice on your buyer's door saying, hey, we've got a package for you. You owe $3. Come to the post office. Then your buyer has to basically get in their car, go to the post office, bring $3 in actual money with them, and then the post office will give them this package, and the buyer will be pissed because they're expecting to pay $0.84 cents to get a coin from you, not an additional $3 surprise because you didn't send it in the proper envelope. So again, do not ship this way with bubble mailers. It's not allowed. Also, do not ship coins in capsules. Capsules do not fly with this program. Again, the key is the envelope that you're mailing it in has to be flat. You could put a little bit of padding, but no bubble, no capsules, nothing graded. Okay, just has to be a, a raw coin. Now you can put it in a mylar holder like this. Here's a, you know, a quarter in a mylar holder. That's okay, because that doesn't add girth. But as soon as you put it in a capsule, you're adding girth. The post office could reject it. And basically, again, put that little pink notice on your buyer's door saying, hey, we got a package for you. Come and get it. Bring $3 or $4 and they'll be pissed because they'll be like, hey man, what's up? I paid 84 cents for you to ship me this coin, but you didn't ship it properly and now I got to pay $4. I want a refund. It's just going to give you a lot of headaches. Don't do that as a seller. Okay. The other thing you don't want to do is overkill on the envelope. Again, you're shipping a $20 coin. Okay. This is a really nice envelope. I bought these from eBay. I, I have a store uh, subscription. So every quarter eBay gives me 25 bucks. I always use it to buy some of the supplies from them. This is their newest one. Okay. So this is a seven by five envelope. It's girthy, meaning it's stiff. This has definitely some weight to it. It has protected corners. It's got the adhesive here and it's got adhesive. If someone sends the coin back to you and recycles it. Okay. Pretty cool, right? But I would not use it for the negotiated flat rate shipping because right away, this all by itself, if you can see here on the scale through the lighting, is basically an ounce all by itself. It's 0.98 ounces. That's way too heavy. That right there is 60 cents because it starts at 60 cents. 
So as soon as you add this, you're automatically at 84 cents. There you go. I'm sending a quarter. I'm at a buck 29 ounces. I got to charge 84 cents to ship this item. That's how most sellers do it. Like if they're doing everything right, but the only thing they're doing wrong is they're doing total overkill on the envelope. You don't need to do that for a $20 coin. You're better off finding this. This is not as heavy duty as that one, but this is fine for a $20 coin. This I believe is a six and a half by four and a half envelope, white envelope. It is a stiff mailer. It does have the adhesive, but it weighs 0.41 ounces. So if you take a quarter, slap it on there, look at that, guys. I'm under an ounce. So me, myself as a seller, I can now ship this at a cost of 60 cents. Now my buyer pays 84 cents because I put everything at least at two ounces. So what am I doing with that extra 24 cents? Dude, guys, I'm using it for the gas to drive the post office and I actually buy these mailers and the supplies. These mylar holders themselves, they're about 17 cents a piece. So by the time you buy the holder, the tape, the paper, the gas to the post office, it's way more than 24 cents an item. So don't be mad at me if I'm making 24 cents in shipping on you because I'm really not after I buy all the supplies. Okay, so I highly recommend this size envelope, and I personally, this one is actually one that I'm actually shipping out today. Um, so I don't use stickers for my labels. I print them out, I cut it out, and then when you cut out the label from a standard sheet of paper, you're gonna be left with this half of the piece of paper. So I recycle this paper. I use it for um, thank you cards. I know it's generic, but I'll actually cut like little squares. I'll write a little thank you for buying a coin from my coin shop. I'm also very different when I ship a coin, even if they're, this guy bought this coin here for 14 bucks, not this coin, but that's already wrapped inside. I take a picture of the coin with the envelope. I send a message through eBay saying, hey, thank you for your purchase. Here's your coin. Keep an eye on your mailbox. Um, and then that way the buyer themselves, they know that when they get this envelope, that's from me. The cool seller that actually sends the photo and does you know does a nice job and follows up that that buyer is then more likely to leave me feedback because they had a good experience why because they got the photo of the actual coin that they received they got nice photos so there's no like mystery they didn't get blurry photos i've authenticated the coin they've got the actual picture of the envelope they know what they're expecting to see in the mail they open it up look what's inside it's the coin that i sent the photo of everybody's happy and this provides tracking. This protects me as a seller, protects the buyer. They know they got it delivered. And more importantly, you're telling eBay, hey, I shipped this guy out a coin. Here's my tracking number. There's proof that I actually shipped it. Here's proof that it was delivered because the post office is scanning this item. And it cost you, the seller, 60 cents to send it. Awesome, right? So anyways, this is what I do. So I'll, I'll print the actual label. I'll put it on here. I'll put two pieces of tape on the bottom. So like I do here. And then before I put the third piece of tape, it'll be open like this. I'll take the actual coin, and let me get this out of my hands here. I'll take the actual coin, and again, I write a little thank you card, I fold it, I'll put it in it like this. And again, this is the recycled paper because I cut all my labels. And then I'll just take the piece of paper here, and then you just, you know, you fold the coin inside. You fold the coin inside, tape, 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 and guess what? This fits perfectly inside here. And then you slip it, well, if you fold it properly, it, it fits in there correctly. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you fold it like that, make sure it lays flat, <clears throat> rip off your adhesive, seal it, and then your very last piece of tape you put across the top, that seals the actual label and then it puts a little tape on each side of the corner. So now we have a very nice flat, correct size envelope. Everybody's happy, the coin's protected, they got a thank you, thank you card inside from me. Um, it provides tracking and the post office isn't going to bust you or give your buyer that little pink note on the door saying, your seller screwed up and shipped it in one of these. It's wrong, or your seller put this in there, it added girth, that doesn't meet our standards that we negotiate with eBay. So very cool way to ship a coin 
for as a seller as little as 60 cents. So you're not going to get this advice from other silver channels because most of those dudes and gals do not sell on eBay. And if they do, they probably haven't read the rules <laughs> to ship uh, $20 coins for as little as this much. Or they don't sell twenty dollars coins. Again, I'm I'm weird. I like to I like to sell everything that I that I run across because I believe there is a budget and a price range for everybody. So I don't just deal with the wealthy. I deal with everybody. Anyone that wants to buy history from me, I appreciate it. So hopefully this tutorial ha will help you as a seller or as a future seller to sell your coins on eBay. So I really appreciate you guys watching. Please like, share, subscribe. Let me know if this type of video is cool too. Like if you want other type of advice videos like this. Um, I, I don't think there's enough of them out there in the world of YouTube. There's just a lot of like, hey, look at all this stuff I got. You can't have it. Ooh, uh, uh, silver's going up. Silver's going down. Guys, this is real life. This guy's bought this coin for me. Yeah, he paid 84 cents, but I got my supplies covered. He's getting a nice thank you card for me. It's actually a three, an 1855 German three, uh, three, three fenning coin. Cool piece of history. Um, he got it for like $13 and 84 cents delivered to his door. He doesn't have to get in his car, go to the coin shop, try and find an 1855 three fenning that no coin shop's going to advertise. They have listed for sale or on the website. So he's happy. I'm happy. Everybody's happy. So. Share the hobby with others, guys. Let's spread this around. Please share my, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Please give me a thumbs up and let me know if videos like this are cool. Hopefully they're cool. Again, caring or sharing is caring, as they say. <laughs> Talk to you in the next one. Bye-bye.